Hi, Gary. Hi. How Everyone are you? come through the game okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was fine. A um, few bumps and bruises, but yeah, all, all settled down now. So, um, yeah, don't foresee any, any real issues with the squad for tomorrow. Marcus Tavernier, how close is he to a start now? Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's closer. He's had two two decent sub appearances, so um, yeah, we'll we'll see how he's feeling in the morning, and yeah, hopefully we can get him in the starting eleven soon. Do you feel that it's safer to err on the side of caution because of his past, even though he could be such a key player for your running? Yeah, we we have people at the club that are specialised in that area, so of course I'll yeah I'll listen to the advice and speak to Tav himself and find out how he's feeling and um, yeah try and make a real good decision on it that um, everyone would love Tav to have been available for 90 minutes in the in the last two games of course but it's also important that Tav's available for the for the rest of the season so um, yeah we, we we need to handle it correctly but he's um he's come for another good week so um, yeah there's there's potential that he, he could play a, a big part at, um, at Leicester tomorrow. Are you excited for that prospect? His finishing could could be a big difference, couldn't it? Yeah, there's there's a lot that he can bring that, that could be a difference. Yeah, um, of course the group is, yeah, the, the group's been doing okay already. But he's yeah, he's he's a lovely addition to add to it. He's a great lad. He brings enthusiasm, a buzz around the place, as well as his his quality, his athleticism. So he's um, yeah, he'll be a big player for us, of course. Um, and yeah, he's he's um, he's getting fitter by the day. So um. It, it, it'll, it'll be back in full full throttle in, in no time at all. We talked about the boost after the Fulham result. To what extent has the, has the win been taken out of your sails by that defeat to Brighton? Yeah, no, it hasn't. It hasn't. Um, boys understand the, the the reasons why and that the, the performance was, yeah, we, we caused Brighton a, a, a few problems. Um, they're a very good side that are sort of knocking on a Champions League door. Um, yeah, they, they haven't had many games recently where they've had that many chances against them and such a high XG against so um, we managed to cause Brighton some problems the, the couple of errors in their goals and the fact that we didn't manage to take our chances was disappointing of course um, but yeah performance wise it was yeah you, you, can, you can win you can win Premier League matches performing how we did on um, on Tuesday night and Leicester I know it's a bit of a cliche but is this a, a relegation six pointer as far as you're concerned um, yeah, I don't, I don't ever, I haven't really bought into the six-pointer thing until you get right near the end, I guess, where there's only a few clubs in it and you know that um, it's you or somebody else and you can stop them winning as well as winning one yourself. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a big game, of course, two clubs that are desperately fighting to, to survive in the Premier League. So it's, it's, it's a big game for both clubs. Um, lads understand it. Um, we've been involved in them before. Um, we've been involved in a few already this season. And we were involved in some last season as well, towards the end of the promotion campaign that were real big ones. And the lads handled them really well, thinking of White Huddersfield and at home to Nottingham Forest. So some real big performances in, in pressure situations. So um, lads know what's expected. Is it fair though to say it's one you can't afford to lose? We could lose tomorrow and stay up, um, definitely. Obviously, we don't want to lose tomorrow, but um, yeah, that is possible. Are you worried at all about uh, bounce from Leicester following the sacking of Brendan Rodgers? Leicester have got yeah really good players, um, so yeah they could they they, they perform well in, in um, a lot of the matches that I've seen. Um, James Madison's obviously uh, England international. Harvey Barnes, fantastic talent. Um, yeah, they've caused teams some problems. They scored four against Aston Villa and Tottenham not too long ago. Um, I've obviously been on a bit of a tough run, but. It's, Premier League is like that. You only need to drop your levels a little bit, and you can you can get punished. So um, they were right in the game the other night against Aston Villa. Right in the game, and we know the, the form that Aston Villa are in. So um, yeah, it won't, won't be an easy game at all. So um, whether it was the the old manager or a new one, it'll it'll definitely be a tough game for us. You mentioned the quality of the individuals they've got. Are you surprised they are where they are this season? Yeah, I think we spoke about this in the in the home game here. They. I didn't expect them to be down the bottom by the next time we we played we faced them. Um, so yeah, they've obviously had a, a tough season compared to where they've been recently. Um, but yeah, they'll be fighting for their lives, scrapping for every point, um, similar to ourselves. So yeah, it'll be a it'll be a hard fought contest, I'm sure. Gary, sorry about my voice. First of all, um, you said you're taking notice of the table when you're getting nearer the finish. There's nine games to go. To a lot of people, that doesn't sound very many games. That sounds like it's nearly the finish. But I guess the other side is that's nearly a quarter of the season. Um, 
because it's so tight, is there a need to look at the table a bit earlier than you otherwise might want to? Um, no, I always have a yeah, I always have a an idea of where things are, and but on a Saturday, and there's just a pure laser focus on us and and what it needs to be. So like half time scores and our other teams are getting on and what's happened right after the final whistle, my focus is always purely on us and the lads. Um it's not till later in the day on a Saturday that I start to find out what other results have been. Um I'm sure with two or three to go if we'll still if we're still in a in a relegation scrap at that point I'll be keen to find out what's going on a little bit sooner than I do now. Um but at this moment still pure focus on us because it's it's one hundred percent in our hands. If we can we can go and win enough games, then no matter what anyone else does, we'll be absolutely fine. Obviously, the away form, the numbers aren't, aren't what you'd like. The last three away games have been all, I guess, completely different. You beat Wolves, um, you nearly beat Arsenal, and then you lost at Villa. What parts of all those performances do you need to come together to to get something at Leicester? Yeah, we we need to be the best version of of ourselves, which we've we've shown um, quite a lot recently. Um, so, as I said, we've been we had a real tough run of fixtures. Um, six games on the trot against top 10 teams um, we faced and we've we've picked up points in them. Um, in the ones that we haven't picked up points, we've had a good go in. Um, and, it, and the same again tomorrow, if we're a real good version of ourselves and we are full throttle, front foot, uh, front foot um, and well organised, then I'm sure we can cause Leicester some problems, um, as I'm sure they'll be they'll be thinking the same about us. But um, yeah, from from our focus and what we need to be, we can we can be the best version of ourselves and go there and, and have a real good game against Leicester and, and cause them some issues. And they've had issues at home. They've lost the last four at home, which is obviously why they've changed their manager partly. Is that in your message to the players to say, let's turn this crowd against them early? Um, no, I think a lot, yeah, my messaging to the players is always about us, always about what we need to be. Um, so, yeah, there'll be a... I mean, it's different to some games that we've faced recently. The Most of the teams we've played recently have been on a really good run. Um, and Leicester are really opposite to that, but that, that doesn't make them any less dangerous. You know, we've we've been on bad runs ourselves, and you you find a way to to bounce back and fight back and put an end to it. Um, and Leicester will be looking to do the same. So I see them as really dangerous at the minute. I think it's a it's it's obviously a dangerous fixture. They're a they're a Premier League team that have been a Premier League team for a long time that are going through a tough spell. That that doesn't mean they can't turn up on Saturday and put in a real good performance. Um, they definitely can. So. We'll be preparing for the best version of Leicester uh, and making sure that, that that we're ready. Phil Billings, your top scorer, you opted to use him in the, the sort of more, I guess, withdrawn midfield role against Brighton. Um, what's the balancing act you face there in how best to use him? Because obviously he's a very key part of your press while he's playing that more forward role. Yeah, sort of a, a, an availability around him as well. What players are available, how long they can play. Um, he's so good in both positions for me. I think he gives us a a control when he plays lower as well. He's nice on the ball and he um, he brings some calmness to us. Um, but then you obviously lose a little bit of his goal threat. So, um, yeah, it's always always a balancing act as to where you think he's best, most likely to affect it. Um, obviously, Joe Rothwell's done very, very well as well. But with three games in a week, it was, um, yeah, a little bit, can we can we freshen it up a little bit? Can we can we try and see if Phil can give us something lower down? and? Yeah, we'll we'll see this weekend as to to where we think he where we think he fits best. Um, Dango and Hamid obviously both started the other night. They've both been fasting for Ramadan and will be for another couple of weeks. Um, how difficult is that for them to to train and perform at this level this month, given how new they are to this intensity of the league as well? Yeah, it's it's hard for me to to know really because obviously I've never I've never been through anything like it. So I, yeah, I don't know. They always I speak to them about it frequently, and they 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 say they feel fine. So um, yeah, I mean they. They still had some real big moments the other night. The pair of them, Junior, got into some fantastic positions. Obviously, wasn't able to to convert the the couple of real good chances that he had, but got in some good positions. Um, Dango always brings an energy and a um, a pace and a willingness to run in behind. So, yeah, I mean, it it I, I would imagine it would be difficult, um, more difficult than normal to perform at top level. But um, yeah, they they seem to be handling it fine. They've looked good in training. Um, so yeah, we obviously support them the best we can. You saw with the the process the other night as well from the Premier League. So yeah, try and give them the best support they can to perform at their best. Last couple briefly from me. I mean, you mentioned at the top that injuries, everyone was okay, but we saw Sinesi limp off the other night. Is he fit for time? Ah, uh, sorry, yeah, Marcos. So yeah, slight hamstring issue. Check again in the morning. Uh, hoping he'll be okay. Yeah, hopeful that he'll be okay. And would you have any reservations about throwing Ilya in from the start if you needed to? 
Uh, yeah, no, Ilya, Ilya's trained well for a, for a while. He's um, obviously his last competitive game was a long time ago, so that's that's a consideration. Um, but yeah, he's 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 fit enough, I think, to to play a real substantial part in it. Obviously, the the more we can work with him and the the, the quickly more quickly we can get him used to what we do and get him up to speed, then the the better he'll be. Um, but yeah, he's he's in a decent spot physically. Last one, just wanted to get a word from you on the women's game next week. We saw the women's field last night at 85,000 nearly at Wembley. Won't quite be as many here next weekend for the women's game, but it does show another big step forward for the women's team next week to be able to play at the Vitality. Yeah, definitely. I think they're obviously the, the second time they've played here. Maiden head coming down and um, yeah, a record crowd, I think, so far. Over 2,000 tickets sold. So yeah, really yeah, delighted that it's, it's moving in that direction. And um, yeah, me, me and the boys will definitely show our support.